This is the Masonic Light Podcast featuring Pete Ruggieri and Larry Maris. A non stuffy, somewhat humorous approach to understanding our craft. We guarantee you'll have a good time or your money back. This podcast is not endorsed or approved by the Grand Lodge or any jurisdiction. In fact, they'll probably hate it. And now, here's our host, Pete Ruggieri and Larry Maris. Welcome to episode 152. 152. The Sonic Light Podcast. This is your host, Larry. And... Tonight, you just heard, actually, the beginning of episode number one uh, with Pete and myself when we first started the podcast, actually, seven years ago. And it was in March, seven years ago, when Pete and I first met, and we discussed putting well, a podcast... That, that's, that's fake news. You didn't meet seven years ago. Oh, wh- whatever. You met... To create a podcast seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, yeah, well, well, pro, yeah. Thanks, Jack. Continue on. <laughs> <For> cornbread <laughs> in the morning makes me and, happy. And uh, we, we, put, we put together a show, and, and actually our real anniversary date is April. And we begin our eighth year, right? Eighth year of podcasts and i can't believe that we've done seven for some reason or other i'm stuck on six and i always thought we were at six and anyway we we've begin our eighth year the last two years and <laughs> it's fitting at this time because tonight we're paying tribute to an icon actually to pete Ruggieri, who i think most all of you know by now passed away last friday after a long battle with cancer and an acute illness that actually uh, was responsible for his passing. Uh, So we're here tonight to pay a tribute to a guy that all of us, Jack, Tim, Josh, myself, have grown to love really a lot over the years. A cantankerous character who had a sense of humor like unlike anybody I think I've ever known. So we're here to pay tribute to him tonight about this. And, and, and basically, uh, uh, some, I'm really at a loss for words. But as we progress in the show, I think you'll find that uh, – anyway, Jack, go ahead. No, just yeah. – Larry, you're doing fine. The listeners know, Pete, that have been listening to the show for a while – and you guys, you guys, and when I say you guys, I mean the listeners. You guys know how we felt about Pete and how we feel about each other. There was a there was a moment uh, several shows back. We were just having one of these roundtable BS sessions, and 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 Pete asked the question, "What is it that you that you like about this podcast? Why are you here? What what brings you? What brings each of us back to do this podcast?" and all of us said, it, it's just the hang. It's just getting together to be with friends and do this fun thing that people seem to like. And that's kind of the nature of this show. And that's what this show is going to be, is just us hanging out, talking about our friend. Uh, we're going to drop in a couple of uh, comments from uh, people who've known uh, uh, Pete for years um, and just uh, – just reflect because that is what we're called to do in this fraternity is is reflect on our own mortality um, as well as that of the people around us. And as hard as that is, uh, life goes on. And um, it was it was Pete's wish that this show go on. So um, let's go on. So, hey, Josh, you're sitting in the circle tonight. Hi. <laughs> hey, Josh. <laughs> Welcome to the circle. Thank you. <laughs> that means it's your turn. Breathe deep, Josh. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, Josh. That was great. That was... <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yeah. It's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be rough without Pete. 
you know? Everybody who knows Pete knows, uh, you know, what what he was into, and that's service and doing good things and having a good time. And, yeah, it's, it's going to be rough to, uh, yeah. Well, no one certainly will ever take his place. That is right. correct. Nah, but. nah. You see, that one of the things that, that bothers me is there's a wit and there's a wisdom who on the spot could come up with ideas or come up with witty sayings, or, and we've lost that. And I, 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 I think going forward, we're gonna, definitely going to miss it because if you think I'm going to be as witty as him, you're – no way. Mm. No. I am good, though. <laughs> Come on. The thing I will miss the most is that <laughs> – it's it's medi- The thing, thing I'm going to miss the most is medicated Larry. That's medicated what Larry, yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, Pete actually kept Larry in check better than any of us <laughs> and so um we're, we're gonna doomed. have our work cut out for us oh we're yeah doomed. yeah I, I remember the first shows we did i had a habit and this was a professional podcast studio the, the i mean this was mason gibbler had this thing set up i mean mason, mason who was not a mason no mason who was not a mason and i would go in in the show and i'd or and it drove pete crazy and another thing I did in the show, when we had guests, I'd turn away from the microphone like this, and I'd look at the guests to have a conversation. You hey, still Larry, do it. It's over Larry, there, talking Larry, the microphone. You're doing it now. Talking to your microphone. <laughs> I'm doing it now. I'm doing it on purpose now. <laughs> <laughs> so you say. <laughs> so we, we had these little dilemmas, and Pete did his utmost to uh, keep me in check. But here's one thing. Pete said we need to – well, he said over the years we should have something scripted. But the first – I think it was the second or third show I went into, I scripted it. Came in with about six sheets of paper scripting. And Mason saw it. He said, that's a good idea. I gave a copy to Pete. Pete takes him, throws him up in the air. <laughs> We're not doing this. But how many years and how many times – did he ever say, we need to organize this? We need to have oh, a script. My, we every, did every constantly. Yeah. And I never forgot. I thought, this isn't going to happen, Pete. Not as long as I'm here. I eventually got you... to understand it for what it was. Yeah, it was exactly. I, I held a yeah. grudge. Yeah. You threw my papers up in the air in show number two. We're yeah. never going to be organized. <laughs> you go back to episode number 67, which is the show that Josh and I joined, uh, this august body. Um, Pete says, you know, we brought Tim on board to help get us organized and to help us create a uh, script for the show. <laughs> and <laughs> I remember I told him at the time that the the lack of a script is actually what makes this thing. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, to follow along the, the, the lines of comments you all have made, um, you know, I got to know Pete well through all of the Masonic bodies that uh, he was a part of and that I was part of. And that many of you as our listeners were part of. Um, And when I was asked to come on, I was originally, as Jack was, originally asked to come on as a guest. And we just kept coming back. Um, Once we knew where it was. Right, exactly. But it was established. And so, but it was Pete that did that. And he did that so well with so many different groups. Uh, I know within Freemasonry, if you uh, look at his Masonic resume, uh, it literally could go on for pages of all the different groups and bodies he was a part of. And he not just was a joiner or a card-carrying member, but he took the leadership roles in each one of them to help better them, to help better him, and to help better all of the people that he came across And I think that is a laudable goal for all of us to follow that, you know, so many times, how many times do we carry these stacks of dues cards Mm -hmm. in our wallets and we just go to the meeting, but are we taking responsibility to see that we take that body a step further than where it was when we came in. And he, Pete, Pete did that better than anybody. As much as he was, I mean, the the joke, and I think somebody else is going to mention this in, in words that we're going to hear later, but, you know, the the running joke that we had in the studio was don't make eye contact. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 
the 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 irony of that is is Pete served in every office and every body that he was a member of, so it was a joke, but it was funny. But because it was not funny, because it was a joke, but it was funny. But and and that's just, and yet he was the one that made eye contact more than everywhere. Anyone. Well, everywhere well, he went. Here's here's the thing: when he first started saying that in the show, we had some negative feedback from people. Oh yeah, uh, some of them higher up in the food chain. Uh, that didn't like that because they thought people wouldn't volunteer or, or to be an officer or to work in the lodge because of what Pete said. But they didn't understand that over the years they realized don't make eye contact. That doesn't mean you don't take on responsibility because right. Pete was the perfect model mm -hmm. for that. And, yeah, you're, that's going to be talked about a little bit yeah, later. We'll hear Absolutely. That. We'll I don't want to steal any thunder from anybody, but. Hey, my voice is sound pretty good tonight, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that uh, you're, you sound working like Barry well. Banks. Oh man, yeah. well, yeah. Barry Banks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have some toss. Hey, so Barry, later. Barry, I hope you're listening to this, <laughs> and we also hope you'll be down here when the memorial service is set up. Yeah, so. absolutely. So. As we said, in uh, we did a Facebook Live before we started tonight, and we mentioned there, but we'll mention here on this episode that in a couple of weeks there will be a memorial service for Pete. Uh, somewhere here in central Pennsylvania, and we will make sure we get that word out uh, to all of you as our listeners, because so many of you have said you wanted to come and pay respects uh, to both Pete and his wife, Stephanie. It will also be a combination of a memorial service and a Masonic funeral. Yeah, a, 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 a Masonic yeah. funeral yeah. will be yeah. part of that, so yeah. uh, we do want to do that. But Larry. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's paying attention, at least. Yes, Tim. Tell, tell us... Tell. about how you met pete there you go okay yeah, get up well, close to your mic there 1998 not too close uh pete was in a class at bell atlantic it was a training class for customer service representatives and i was in the class that followed his so we were on the same fourth floor of the, the bell atlantic building in downtown lancaster and his class was adjacent to mine so i first met him there and then they went down into the uh, incubator, which after you graduate from class, which six months at the time, that was a training for Bell Atlantic Oof. for customer service reps. And he went down in the incubator, and then we finished our last two months of class, and then we went down in the incubator. So I've known Pete since then, and we worked at uh, Bell Atlantic, which later became Verizon. And did a lot of stories because I knew Pete, I knew and being in the incubator where the stuff and the shenanigans that went on at work were incredible. They were funny. But they all led to positive effects for the company. So the company liked it. And it's interesting that most of those people were promoted into management, mm -hmm. which, was, which was awesome. So anyway, one day, uh, Pete and I, we went into the big room. You graduated from the incubator and you went into the big room. And that, you know, that was, mm, that's, that's a step up. Well, it wasn't really. We just we walked across the hall. And it's just a bigger room. Bigger right? room, yeah. <laughs> where all the really good people were working. And uh, I think it was about six months later, Pete became a cubicle. Uh, we had cubicles. An actual cubicle he became? Uh, he became a cubicle. He's a transformer. Yeah. Oh, we were in wow. a cubicle. <laughs> but his cubicle was adjacent to mine, and there was a window in between my desk and his desk. So Pete sat across from me. Well, that lasted for about five or six months, and management decided to move us because we were just having too much fun. <laughs> we know where this story here, is going. Here, here's the thing. I was writing a book, and Pete helped me with it. And I, I recognize Pete in the, in the cover of the book. Pete helped me with it. He would read excerpts from it, and he would make some, give me some ideas about things. And uh, one day I went in, and I sat down, and Pete says, Larry, he said, some damn guy stole your book. I said, what? What do you mean? Yeah, there's a book out by the name of, uh, the, an author by the name of Dan Brown. He stole your damn book. <laughs> Pete, how could he steal my book? I don't know, but you better rethink this. I went out that night after work over to Barnes & Noble, and I bought the damn book and started reading it. I thought, oh, damn, I got a major problem here. So I had to do a complete rewrite, 
And when I finished the manuscript, Pete was the first person to ever read the manuscript before it was published. And what was the title of that book? I oh, The Red Serpent. <laughs> <laughs> It's lost among all those other books uh, that I've written. And actually, that's the answer to a trivia question about the podcast, is what is the second advertiser ever mentioned on a Masonic Light podcast? That would probably oh, be the, the Red, Red Serpent. Serpent. would be the Red Serpent. Oh, Do you yeah. remember the first ad first on the Masonic Light no, podcast? I don't remember that. Ooh, I Masonic just Scarves. Oh, oh, of course. Oh, yeah. from the Scarfmonger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scarfmonger of Gap. Yeah. All right, Jack. What, what? How do you how do you remember your first meeting of Pete? I'm not even sure I could trace it to an original event. Uh, he's just – I've been in masonry. I came in – He's everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> he kind of is or was. But he, he – he, um, I came in in a one-day class in 2004. Um, and I jumped in a chair and I got in the line. And there was this Pete Ruggieri guy who was – down in Lancaster, and he was a character, and um, the whole running for mayor thing was going on. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I knew about him, but I didn't really have anything to do with him. And um, I, I have to say, I'm not even sure how I got swept into his orbit. Um, but I said something on when we did a quick Facebook Live, and I said, F Pete, Pete was a planetary body around which other things orbited and and other people orbited and he was he never he never like drew them in and you know had them crash onto the surface but he just had these collections of people and i i so admire that because i am so not that guy um but pete was and he just he just was a very um a, a person who attracted other people and he was just a, a, a wonderful collector of people and he he knew people from just the broadest strokes of of life that you know uh, just different people from all kinds of different groups and we're going to uh, talk about this at at, at the service um, the the analogy we came up with should I say it yeah, sure. I mean, he was he was a, his life was a pizza. A Pete Pete Za. Za right? You see what we did. His right life there? was a pizza. And it was this giant thing that was tasty and fun, but it was divided into slices. And he was all really, kinds of ingredients. He was really masterful at keeping the slices separate, except for where the cheese overlapped a little bit. And I can't I mean, it's a silly a analogy and they'll boo me off the stage when I <laughs> tell it out loud, but but that's just Pete. I mean, there's no describing him. He he was just um he was just fun to be around. There was always some kind of shenanigans going on when when Pete was around. And um you guys had me on Larry um I came in at episode 8 and and then I think again at 10 and maybe 14 or something. Uh, and then after that, I, I clicked in and, and became uh, regular. That's because we kept getting pe feedback. Pete and I kept getting feedback. We need to have Jack on. Only because he sounds like the voice of reason. He's got a good voice. And he's a little bit more intelligent than you two. Well, that, that's actually what Steph said. Um, while, all, while all this was going on, she said, you are one of Pete's higher functioning friends. <laughs> <laughs> we recognize that. Yeah, that's absolutely. why he's been on the show ever since. So anyway, anyway, so that's my Pete history. So Josh. Yeah. You well, were the only one recruited. Everybody else just showed up. Just showed up. <laughs> yeah, Usually was, for an episode recruited. and just never left. The only one. Yeah, he was recruited. I was recruited, yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it so required did you know, skills. Did you know Pete before that first episode you were on? Uh, I didn't really know Pete very well. Uh -huh. uh, I met him uh, – well – my first introduction to Pete, well, so I became a Mason. No banging on the table, Larry. Knock it off, Larry. Uh, my first introduction to Pete, uh, I became a Mason the same month that Masonic Light Podcast started. Oh, cool. Ah. So I was introduced to the podcast like right away at the very beginning, right? So I knew, I knew Pete's name from the podcast. And then after I joined Lamberton um, – <coughs> Well, after I got my first degree, uh, I joined the, the, the Lamberton Facebook group, uh, 
And then shortly after my second degree, I see in the Lamberton Facebook group a post from Pete sleeping in the senior warden's chair saying, <laughs> I was recruited for a second degree tonight. And, and that was my second degree. <laughs> I love it. So that was my introduction to Pete. <laughs> That's and great. if you've been to a Pennsylvania second degree, it's fitting. At least but, it's uh, only a short name. Yeah. Uh, but I, I actually met him shortly after that. At, uh, he was with Larry at Academy of Masonic Knowledge. Yeah. And that was the first time I met Pete. And I hung out with he and Larry that day and sat with him. And yeah. Good. So, Why don't we take a, a quick hang break? On, I want to share oh, my first oh, encounter. Tim, I thought you were. Okay, Tim has sorry. never met Pete. Can't I we, thought you already did. I'm interviewing you all. I need to interview myself. So, Tim, what was your Tim, first? Encounter? What was your first encounter with Pete? <laughs> <laughs> so, believe it or not, it was about a month or so before <clears throat> the Academy of Masonic Knowledge that you two referred to, uh, where the guy from the California. Lodge of Research, I think it was, or the California somebody was there yeah, talking I about podcasts. That. Yeah, I remember that. And that's when you all got came up with this idea. But I had met Pete about a month before through another Masonic acquaintance, just briefly. And I remember seeing you two there together, and my first thought was, how do those two fit in those two chairs? Because <laughs> Pete was quite large at the wow. time. Yeah. And yeah. Larry was right I, next I, to him. I, yeah, I was. And so, big too, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and I'm no skinny person. But um, anyway, so I didn't think anything of it. And then all of a sudden, I started to see Pete in lots of places. Everywhere. And so one day, we just went up and started talking. The next thing I know, we're both in Grotto. Mm -hmm. And that really, like, threw fuel on the fire. Mm -hmm. And then I was honored to to be on the Grotto cruise when Pete was uh, Monarch. Monarch. And that's really where I got to know Stephanie and mm -hmm. see the interactions between those two lovebirds. Um, and it was quite amazing. And from that time on, um, I whether they felt this or not, but I always cons I, I consider you guys my best friends anyway. But Pete and Stephanie. Uh, you just, were their adopted teenage son. Well, that's exactly. What it was. <laughs> yeah, even that's though I'm happened. older than both of them. But. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I just, you know, I came to love them both. Um, as I said earlier in the introduction to this, um, Pete personifies, in my mind, what a Mason should be in terms of absolutely getting into an organization, making it better than you found it, and bringing other folks along for the ride. Yep. And I think that is, yep. in my mind, one of the best tributes you could pay. <coughs> So, as Jack was going to say, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to hear from um, a F contributor. F F FOP. A Friends of Pete. Friends of Pete. Um, and someone that you will recognize the voice and know the individual. Um, but we'll be back after that. Hey there, Masonic Light Podcast friends. This is regular contributor and co-host of Last Resort, Seth Anthony. How does a man mourn the passing of a friend? This is a question that Freemasonry has engaged with for centuries. Through our funeral services, memorial services, and constant reminders of memento mori, our encounters with death play an important part in our craft. Yet, when confronted with someone's passing, we find ourselves at a loss for words, or at least I do. I first met Pete back when we formed Ubar Grotto in 2011. From the moment he joined, we knew Pete was pure Grotto material. He had the right attitude and the terrible wardrobe, and brought his brand of shenanigans along for the ride. Pete would tell you that he was the first elected monarch of Ubar Grotto, as the rest of us schmoes started in the line during the founding. Pete actually had to run for the office of Venerable Prophet and, like, wanted it and stuff. And he worked his way through the line and was a great monarch. Because of this, Pete built a reputation as a fun mason. Yes, he was a past master, but he gravitated towards the shrine, the grotto, the jay. Yet in more recent times, Pete had come to enjoy the serious side of masonry. He was a past sovereign master of Junto Council, number 537 of the Allied Masonic Degrees. 
and a warrant member of Donegal Church Assemblage of the Operatives. Not to mention that he was in training to take over as secretary of the Valley of Reading. Pete reveled in all things Masonic, and we, his brothers, reveled in him. Through the Masonic Light podcast, Pete has influenced a whole generation of Freemasonry. Because of this work, he has opened the doors of central Pennsylvania Freemasonry to the world, showing what a vibrant Masonic community can accomplish when working together. His charitable work was second to none, but he will always be remembered for his quips like, don't make eye contact. While Pete's form may no longer stand with us, his spirit will be ever present, whether in a joyous toast, a muttered jab under the breath, or a silent prayer, ending with so mote it be. Farewell, my brother, until the rest of us journey to that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. I'm not crying. You're crying. Nah. Oh, gosh. So, uh, yes. Yeah, a lot Seth, of good stuff in there. Right? Absolutely. That damn Seth knows how to write. Yeah. Um, for those of you who may not recognize the voice, Seth for a long time was a contributor with Capura Obscurum. Which was a bit that we had on here, and actually, how do you say that, Larry? I, I, I Larry could never say. I it. could never say it. What did what did I call it? Corpus, er, corporate corporate groom or something. Or corporate something. Groom. Yeah. yeah, I had a, um, I had a really hard time saying. it. But uh, go back and listen to some early episodes with Seth doing his little bits on that, and uh, I think we'll probably have Seth on here in the coming episodes as a guest host at some point, and uh, uh, we'll get to talk a little bit more to Seth, but. Uh, as you said, there was a bunch of stuff. I mean, there's there. a there's a ton of stuff in there, and it, it's a, it's beautifully written. And the it, I, I talk all the time about be the change, and Seth kind of said it without saying it, but he was the change. He yep. saw he saw what wasn't working, and he did something about it. Whether Grand Lodge approved of it or not <laughs> <laughs> remains to be determined. You know, the interesting um, thing is, in many in most of those cases. They came around to it. It ended up. It ended up proven out. Yeah, yeah a, a lot of the stuff. I mean, and that beginning intro uh, was very intentional about, uh, and we are, we're always careful to say that we don't represent any Grand Lodge, right. but um, well, we're also not supposed to do harm. But so. lots, <laughs> we, we really do try to prevent that from happening. And, but and, and there are a lot of Grand Lodge officers, both in Pennsylvania and around the country. That listen to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We um, we yeah. saw, in fact, one of the uh, one of the people who dropped a note to us wrote about the fact that uh, the the Grandmaster of the State of Washington was wearing one of the Knights Quarantine medals yeah. well, in a in a picture in uh, in a. We'll read that. In the we'll read that a little. We'll hear later. that a little right. bit later. But yeah. it's um, yeah. This um, this thing has been um, I don't know. It's been a wonderful tool for new Masons. I, I know a lot of our guys that are coming through our line listen to the show, and um, and they'll know Pete through the show. Um, so if if there is an immortality, it's in who who remembers you after you're gone, mmm. and that's yeah. that's a tremendous. Um, just way to think about Pete. He'll, and, he'll be with us as long that, as this show exists. I'm sorry. Now that you said that, I realize there's 151 shows. That he's in, a couple that we all missed, but 151 shows. His voice is constant. His vo- we constantly have people going back listening to all the episodes. Sure. New people listen to one of our episodes, and next thing you know, they keep going back. I think I calculated, now we're going to hear guffaws on this. I think I calculated <laughs> that the number of people who listen to the show the first time and then go back, We've got definitely, I, I think we could safely say, over 400,000 listens to the show. In how many countries? Uh, in 60, I think it's 65 countries. And how many and planets? Planets, four, we know Four of. planets? Yeah, because how they, about galaxies? Four that we know No, of. no, they communicated <laughs> okay. with me. There's only four. Okay. <laughs> I know, I get messages. Speculative dimensions. <laughs> in, in between old episodes of I Love Lucy, exactly. they'll pick up the Sonic Way podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Seth alluded to all of Pete's um, work that he did. That didn't just extend within the Masonic fraternity. <clears throat> no, uh, actually. One of, uh, and I want to mention both of them here. First oh. of all, his support of the uh, Doberman rescue efforts, 
with the I'm going to butcher the name. We'll put a link in the show Delaware notes. Valley Doberman Picture yeah, Association. Association. Yeah, something like that. The Doberman Gang in Delaware. Um, Develpa. Yeah, Develpa. Um, you know, he rescued countless number of those, fostered countless number of those. Um, we all followed the. Uh, drama if you will cheaper uh, by the dozen she provided yeah the dozens uh, the dozen dobermans that were born in their home when they rescued a dog not realizing she was already pregnant and uh so that that group definitely uh is one that pete was was dear to his heart to both he and stephanie and um we hope that, uh, and I know that we'll we'll have conversations about how we might continue some support in there in his name. Also, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say also his work with the Santa Stumble that, that started. I said I was going to talk about them both. You can you can chime in. The Santa Stumble that actually started with wow, just Larry's. Larry's getting really feisty. He really me. is. <laughs> Those uh, spinal R- tap drugs down. are uh, <laughs> kicking Rout it out. down, Larry. Rout it down. Yeah. Uh, started with just you know two or three bars in downtown Lancaster. And a few hundred people. And a, and a, and a hundred people, maybe. Yeah. And the grew to – I was actually down there this last year. 4,000. And there were 4,000 people, and every bar in downtown Lancaster was jam-packed. You couldn't get in any of them. And everybody paid – what was it? For the stupid pen, it was like twenty bucks. Twenty bucks, like that, yeah. and you would get this pen that got you nothing except <laughs> except the bars that a did charge. in the line at the bars. That's right. <laughs> the bars that charged to cover that night many times would wave it if you had a button. But still, other than just the joy of having a button, just a button, people would donate uh, twenty bucks to the. <laughs> Uh, Lancaster Police Horse Society or something. No, it's the Lancaster Mounted Police. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Something. <clears throat> Lancaster right. City Mounted Police. Mounted uh, Larry. Over $200,000 actually yeah. raised in those years. But, yeah. but go back to the, the, to the quote, the, the, uh, the, the motto, right? Uh, have fun, do good. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He started out wanting to have fun, right. so we're going to have a bar crawl. Yeah, let's have a bar crawl. Ooh, you know what? The cops will be all over us. We should do something good for the cops. What should we do? Let's raise money for the cops. So that's how, that's exactly. how it turned into Next what it thing was. thing you know, you had the Next cops you know, helping you out. 20,000 people in Lancaster <laughs> raising money for the cops. It was brilliant. Yeah. And and that's that's the have fun, do good. I mean, there's no reason why other people can't pick up that ball and run with it. And we, we hope you do. Larry, you said there were some others, too. Well, yeah. He, he, uh, he used to be able to – he had a knack for being able to find a need for something and then putting something together uh, and then and making it flourish. I can remember the 505 Club. Yep. It was uh, a way for single people to meet each other. Now, it wasn't a dating app or, or dating li- – anything like that. It was just a place to meet at a, a local pub – and and gather people together to have some drinks and have some social interaction with each other. And the thing grew to where they were bringing 100, 150 people into a pub whenever they'd meet. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, and Stephanie, you can correct me, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll change that on a later show, okay? She doesn't. But listen. I think he met you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that Stephanie. I mean, and and that's that. They, they began uh, 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 seeing each other with that. Now, Pete found out a little bit uh, after that that she lived about five doors down on the same street as he did. So that's how, but they they met and started dating, and I think it was at five oh five. And he started that, and that thing grew. It was amazing what happened. He was responsible for people of Lancaster. Which, if you go online today, it's, yep. it's, uh, it's like on Facebook, it's on social media, and it is a riot. And he was, he was, the, he was the main writer for that. He kind of ran that thing. I mean, it, 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 that was a peep. It was a parody know. account. It was yeah. a parody of Lancaster County. And there were a lot of things to make fun of in our county. But the thing about Pete making fun of it, Pete loved being here. Yes. Mm-hmm. He loved Lancaster County. But more important, Larry, he made – a a nationally famous tour s- site. Yes, out of the Gap Lighthouse. The Gap Lighthouse. That's, that's another. So those thing. of you who uh, haven't been to to the majestic shores of Sadsbury Bay, uh, where you can see the uh, the majestic Gap Lighthouse, 
uh, as you pass uh, on your way down Route 41. Captain Abner um, Hockenfuss. Cap- uh, Abner Hockenfuss is the keeper of the lighthouse, and um, you can you throw a piece of olive loaf as you drive by and um, and visit the cheesemonger. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the- they appreciate the olive loaf because actually the goat – yeah, it's the olive. Skid marks. Skid marks. Skid marks. Yeah, it's, it's very – yeah. get, We actually have a draw, a Pete's drawing <clears throat> of both of them, <laughs> Admiral uh, Hockenfuss and Skidmark on our uh, dry erase. Board. And they made an appearance in the uh, digital order of Knight's Quarantine. Yeah. They they were in the, yeah. yeah, that's they were an important turning point in that story. So majestic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's – yeah, that's the stuff. I mean, that have fun. Do good. What else is there? That's why we're here. Exactly. Yeah. Time for a break? Uh, sure. Whatever. All right. We're good. Let's take another break. And this time we're going to hear from one of our current contributors, uh, somebody by the name of Doug. Cool. Wait, before we do that. Oops. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to read this. Okay. Is that, should I do that now? You can. Okay. This is how much stage direction there is when we do this show. <laughs> So this is from a, a Facebook a friend um, who is on the Masonic Light podcast page on Facebook. And he sent us a message, and it's very short. Um, his name is Robert William Marshall. Uh, look him up, um, friend him, and then, you know, fish for his credit card. Um, he <laughs> says, very sorry for your loss, guys. A bunch of Masons across the country have been quietly watching and hoping for good news. Pete has had such a great reputation for being a good brother. I wish I'd known him. I look forward to seeing you all carry his legacy forward while continuing to build your own. And I I just, I I thank him for those kind words. And that's, and that's what Pete has told us that we need to do is to keep driving this thing forward. Um, Keep it fun, keep it good. And that's what we're going to try to do. And along those lines, Jack, a couple of other uh, posts that have been made, um, and again, so many of you have offered incredibly kind thoughts on our uh, Facebook page and sent us text messages and so on. But Mark White uh, sent a message saying, I found your podcast right after contacting my local lodge and beginning my six months to, quote, get to know you pre-petition time. I binged all of the past episodes and felt a real connection to Pete and Larry as time went on the rest of the crew. I've had a few one-on-one interactions with Pete on Messenger and helped him connect with the most worshipful from Washington State after Pete spotted the Knights of Quarantine Jewel in his installation photo, which Jack referred to earlier. I I dearly wish that I'd had a chance to meet him in person as he helped me understand the lighter side of Freemasonry. And another one from our friends over at At Refreshment Masonic Video Podcast. Uh, Wesley Rudder says, We had just spoken about Pete at our last Chai Il Grotto meeting in Villa Park, Illinois. We're deeply saddened to hear of Brother Pete's passing. We at At Refreshment Masonic Video Podcast are fans of yours. And Pete, our condolences. We say to you guys, we say that you guys are a big influence in why I started this podcast. I type this with tearful eyes. Though I never knew Pete or got the chance to speak with him, he and the rest of the brothers have touched my life, as you have so many, with so many of the Masonic Light podcast and throughout the Masonic career. Our hearts go out to Pete, his wife, family, Masonic family, and all of you at Masonic Light podcast. And it was signed. Wesley Rudder. So, Jack, uh, thank you for um, prompting us to share a couple of those posts that uh, others have made. And uh, as we said, Pete just touched so many lives. And, and I mean, it's incredible how, f- how far flung that is. We've got <coughs> friends in Canada and Australia and Bulgaria, apparently. Romania. 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 Yeah. Okay. We're still We're the number over. one comedy podcast there. We're all over reason. Romania. But it, it's <laughs> remarkable – and it, it's because of the vision that Larry, you and he had yep. um, when, when you saw how, what, what, what a huge opportunity it was. 
and then turn around a couple of years later and it's COVID. We didn't, we didn't have a vision. We just... <laughs> no, but you did. You, <laughs> but you really but, did. But here's... Yeah. I mean, that, that that's the thing that's missing in so many lodges is it, it, it it's not it's not like like the clouds part and the sun shines down and the angels sing it's somebody has an idea do something just do something right so any it doesn't matter if it works just do it and if it works it works and if it doesn't work do something else you remember pete said if we get beyond two shows we're doing all right <laughs> well yeah and we're here at 152 i mean you know it's yeah. like uh, and it and and this this show is very different than the show was at episode one. Oh yeah. And when we get to two fifty, it's going to be very different than it is today. Wow. And so, throw the gauntlet down. It's actually you know two fifty. We're, we're growing with the fraternity, and the fraternity is growing. Larry, with you're going to be seven hundred years old. Seven hundred years old. Imagine how gravelly his voice will be. <laughs> <there>. Imagine <laughs> how many more planets will reach. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to listen to Brother Doug, who has some incredibly kind words. I will warn you, you might want to grab some tissue. Yeah, my head hurts. All right. We'll be right back. Hello, brethren. It's just Doug today. No Dutchie. As I sit in front of this microphone, it has been less than 12 hours since I learned of Brother Pete's untimely passing. I wanted to pen a remembrance before I began reading the flood of comments on social media from friends and fellow brothers. I wanted my thoughts to be purely from my heart and mind, and not influenced by the sentiment of others. There are many people that we meet on the road of life. Some we forget, some we never get to know, some we tolerate. Then there are those like Pete, people that touch us, touch us in ways that at the time we might not realize. They make us think differently, make us act differently, inspire us, push us. For me personally, the first time I met Pete face to face was at dinner before my first appearance on the Masonic Light podcast. He was warm and welcoming, as well as not afraid to joke around at my expense. It takes a special type of person to be able to be like that with a total stranger. But as we all know, that was Pete. When we think of service to a greater cause, There's no better example in my time here on earth than that of Brother Pete Ruggieri. From being a dedicated husband to Stephanie, to his work with Doberman Rescue, to his annual Santa Stumble in Lancaster. All of those actions were always for a greater good and never about himself. And then we can turn to his Masonic career. Where does one even begin? Again, his devotion to the craft went way beyond personal ambitions or the attaining of another jewel to pin to his chest. Every body that he was in, he tried to make better. He was involved, and through his actions and dedication, he helped make them all better. This podcast alone, yes, originally created as an outlet for Masonic entertainment, yet it has grown so much beyond that. Thanks to Pete's influence, actions, and words, there have been so many episodes of Masonic Light Podcast that have made me truly think, not only about Masonic things, but about myself and my own actions and my own thoughts. With a healthy mix of humor and a true desire to understand a situation and willingness to advance the fraternity, Pete sat down at his microphone and his words helped culminate all of those wishes, all while making us laugh and think simultaneously. We will all say he will be missed. He was a true asset to the fraternity. Those are both absolutely true statements. But I will not say those things. As I reflect on Pete, I keep coming back to the idea of how one person can make a huge difference. As a high school teacher, I tell my students that all the time. Pete is an honest example of that statement. We all can make a huge difference. Pete made a difference in all of our lives. He made us, our fraternity, and our community better. And I can't thank him enough for that. Abraham Lincoln, in his first inaugural address, called on the better angels of our nature. Pete Ruggieri was one of those here and now. He was truly one of the better angels. Farewell, my brother. And we're back. Um... 
our final segment in our tribute to Pete. Um, you know, uh, it's been it's been a it's been a tough week for all of us. Um, and I feel like my head's just been spinning uh, for the last week and a half or so. Uh, but uh, I feel like there's the, something I ought to be doing. Yeah, and and, and there isn't much. I mean, right. the family's pretty well taken care of and organized and there's a lot of layers of help there exactly so there's nothing much for us to do there yeah. i just i kind of just want to let pete's family know that w- we really we really care deeply about it all yeah. and, and, and whatever they need whatever got, you need you they've know, got i hate the words even huge to say fraternity it. yeah you know it's interesting the last episode uh that pete was with us uh, he spoke intensively about how to ask for help. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things we will, by the way, uh, we do not yet have details on what the uh, public memorial might look like uh, or when that will be. Uh, but we know that it'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the family will let us know, and then we will make sure that all of you know so that um, – if you want to, if you're interested in coming and paying respects, you can, and we would encourage you to do that. And then, secondly, we know that on uh, for the month of February, we had hit pause on our Patreon right. deductions that occurred, and um, because of all the events that occurred, Patreon only allows that to happen for a month at a time. Come to find out, you have um, to. Yeah. And so on March first. Um, I was actually the one that found it out. I called Jack and said, hey, um, did you know? And yeah, so right. um, we, we're, we're, we're going to work with the family to make sure we get access to all of that. And um, we do intend to pause uh, future contributions to Patreon. For a little bit. For yeah. a little bit. But uh, just know that uh, for those of you that found that uh, a little startling that uh, that happened, we just wanted to be forthright with you all and share. But that, so that whole scenario yeah. brings up a point that is really important. And I just told these guys, um, it's a pity we don't record the conversation that happens like while we're on break. But Always uh, <laughs> we have the best show and you guys can't hear it. So don't worry. But That's why we haven't gone to video yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to see this. Yeah. But the, the, the point being that, you know, we are – most of us, 45 to 75-year-old guys that are usually, usually, usually le- less than fit in general, the population of oh, Masons that oh. would listen to this show. He wasn't talking about you, Larry. Yeah, you're on the top end. You're, yeah. Yeah, you're, oh, you're, what an, out, about, what about you're an outlier, Larry. That's all. <laughs> but the, all, right, all right, come on. Give me this because I'm so confused. Um, the point is oh, um, prepare. <laughs> Be prepared. What? No, what? I, I just realized I have a birthday next month. I'm 79. You have to talk into the microphone, Larry. I said, I just realized next month I have a birthday. I'm 79. I just said, oh, hell. I'm sorry. The memory Honestly, is Larry, great. What the hell? What? Right? Yeah. What? Did I mess Hi. up your train of thought? What was I talking I about? I don't even know what I was talking about. I do know what I was talking about because it's really important. Guys, uh, prepare. Like, you know, the, the obvious thing is have a will ready. Have a power of attorney drawn up. Um, the, you're a grown up. These are the things that you know. In the West, you do these things. In the in the shank of your life, um, when you're responsible for other people to other people, um, make sure that if you got hit by a bus tomorrow, that people have access to your account codes, your logins, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your password into your phone. I mean, all that stuff. Bitcoin it, wallet. It's yeah, if you're yeah. that guy. Oh. But this happens instantaneously. Yeah. Is all of a sudden you can't get there, and your your family can't get there, and it's it's not that hard to show them where those passwords are and, and what those account numbers are. and Because mm-hmm. I, I know, even though you're not supposed to have a little book written down with all that, everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure Just they know. let somebody know where yeah, the little book is. You know, and tell them first to hit this button that deletes your cache memory. Carol! And then- Open the safe. Yeah. You know, a friend of Delete mine. Delete your browser history first, and then go in. A friend of mine uh, from back in Kentucky that I've remained in close contact with said to me once, because uh, I always said, you know, I don't want to lose touch with you because we're all getting older, and you know, at some point we're all going to pass. 
Um, and they said, don't worry, I have a book that sits on my desk and it says, okay, I'm dead, now what? And it is literally a list of who to contact, who to tell, here are the bank accounts, here's this. That's brilliant. Here's the will. And yeah. it's like, brilliant. Yeah. It's amazing. The other thing I want to say, because we, as all of us, Larry, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to sneeze? They didn't or? put any sugar in this damn iced tea. Oh, wow. Sorry. He's for clamped. Uh, you're diabetic, right? Oh, it draws your mouth. Oh. Okay. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> we like sucking a lemon. Oh my we want to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to read this because it was a private message to all of us. Oh. But it's actually something that Pete's wife Stephanie shared with us. You're talking about the one I read last night. Yes. Oh. And I just want to mention. I'm not going to read it all. Take off your headphones, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's important. And she said, "I wanted you guys to have this before you record your episode tomorrow." Because she knew that we were all struggling like everybody's struggling with yeah. Pete's passing. And she said, you know, she, t- she reflected on the fact that she and Pete had talked about these kinds of things and so on. And one of the things they had discovered is that emotion is a sign of love for one another. And her encouragement to us was don't be afraid of emotion. Mm-hmm. And whether it's laughing as we do well, or whether it's shedding a tear, which we've done a lot of over the last week or so, yeah, it's okay. As she concludes, she says, feel the feels. Mm-hmm. And I have just been so touched by that. And it's, it's something that we all, particularly as Masons, don't necessarily hear well. Mm-hmm. Um, but we need to recognize that it's okay to feel emotion. Feel the feels. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, Larry, you have any final words you want to say tonight? Uh, go around the table. All right. Well, we are. Yeah. Well, just All right. pass Jack. me by. Oh, you mean start with somebody else. Start with somebody else. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Jack, okay. why don't you start? All right. I'm, I'm, yeah. Um, so this is, uh, you know, corny sayings, not, not goodbye, farewell, blah, blah, blah. Um, Pete will always be in the studio with us. Mm-hmm. Always. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, the show has his DNA in it. Um, we will try to respect that as best we can going forward. Um, and the only purpose for this show uh, is to help you uh, apply masonry in your life the way we are here and that's that's why we're here um so honor pete uh have fun do good excellent josh uh yeah i think the best tribute to pete would be to contribute in your way and do it you know with a uh cheerful spirit i'll say and uh, enjoy it. For he loveth the cheerful giver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I love you, Pete. Yeah. I love you too, Stephanie. Thank you. You ready? Go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, I said earlier that you guys are my best friends. You really are. And through texting and through talking and occasional we video chatted over the last few days and we've seen tears in each other's eyes and you know I remember when we last were with Pete um, just you know the strength of having you guys together has helped me immensely and um, you know um, the love that we share for each other goes far beyond what we do here. Um, you know, th- the friendship and the love that we all share for Stephanie and for the family, you know, really can't be described. Um, I know we joke and cut up a lot, but for me, 
Um, I have a, I have a deep faith, and in that faith, I believe that we will see Pete again, or that I will see Pete again, and I look forward to that reunion, in in hopes that um, the party's already going, and uh, we get to we get to share in that greater place. Okay, Larry. Every time that we walk into this studio, every time when I walk into this studio, I will know that he's here. Because everywhere you look around, it's Pete. I remember the first podcast we did in the studio in Lancaster. I remember the podcast we did in Pete's basement which were incidentally phenomenal. <laughs> and we were able to drink a lot there too. <laughs> I remember these things. I remember everything that we've done. I remember him being my friend at the phone company. I, 25 years of friendship with this man. And I look at it like this. Pete will be with me till the day I die. He'll never leave. I'll think of him every day. I'll miss him every day. I'll think, what would he say? And then I'll answer what I'd say, and we'd both make a fool out of each other, which we always did. <clears throat> and to say the least, we really... We, I've known Stephanie for since he's been married and when he was dating her. And to say that she's a phenomenal lady is an understatement because she's an absolutely beautiful person. Uh, she has the gift of making people feel good. In fact, when she's hurting, I know that. And seeing all of the people who have mentioned something on Facebook or texted us over the past few days has been incredibly important to myself and to our guys here, to, to Jack and to Tim and to Josh, helping reinforcement, uh, reinforcing the, the fact that we knew he was a great person and he was a great person. In life, if you, your journey meets up with one or two individuals who play an important part of your life, who touch your life in ways that no other person has, you're fortunate to come across someone like that. In all my 78 years of life, I have met one person like that, and that's been Pete. Uh, probably at this stage in my life, I'll never meet another. I, you know, have some people contending on my left and my right and in front of me, but, you know, that's... <laughs> Shut Pete, up, Larry. Pete, Pete, <laughs> Pete was, was one of those individuals I, that you will never, ever forget, and one of those persons who influenced me in so many ways. And he's a lot younger than I was, but he still influenced me in so many ways. So I feel that my life has been touched in a phenomenally good way because of knowing him and loving him. And again, we all love his wife so much, so dearly. So I'm about to say that it's hard to conclude this show tonight because when we come back in two weeks, we're starting another episode. We're starting with a guest. And it's almost like we're starting new and I, I don't know that we'll be able, I hope we can, I think we can, exhibit the same kind of wit and wisdom that Pete had. We'll strive to do that, and we won't be phony about it. But in conclusion, we've lost a very good man, a great man, actually. And so with that, I say farewell. Pete, wherever you are, if you're hearing us, 
If you're watching us, we love you. We always will. You'll be in our hearts forever. Good night. This is Larry Maris. Thanks for listening. We're going to conclude tonight's episode. Normally we conclude with our chickens, but we're going to conclude in just a moment with a moment of silence uh, in honor of our good friend Pete Ruggieri. Uh, we have loved you. Stephanie, we continue to love you. And to all of our listeners, we hope that your remembrances of Pete will always be great. Thanks.